uh, Iggy Hoopwatcher Garcia. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the introduction to the medicine wheel. Um, I'm probably sure you've heard of medicine wheels from uh, all different types from around the world. The medicine wheel that I'm going to be talking about is actually the Nemen Ha medicine wheel, the medicine wheel of the band that I belong to. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am actually uh, indigenous to the region of South America, Peru. I come from Callao. My family's ancestry is Spanish, German, Italian, Quechua, and Indian, and a host of other different uh, nationalities. So um, basically, that's who I am. I'm a native indigenous person from South America, Peru, who immigrated with his family here to uh, North America over a course of time, um, introduced to the native folks of the Nemaha band. Philip Landis Cloud Tyler, he is our elected medicine principal chief of the band. Um, as a spiritual adoption, being Nemenha now, I have uh, come across and learned new ways of the medicine wheel. The medicine wheel now is part of my spirituality, part of my religion, part of who I am. So what I'm learning, uh, becoming a medicine man in the Nemenha band, is uh, how the medicine wheel plays a part in our life. What I've come to learn is that the medicine wheel is not just a wheel that belongs to one particular group or individuals or anyone. The medicine wheel is, an, is a universal, beyond imagination, something that you can't even put a finger on. The medicine wheel is bigger than us. Uh, we are part of the medicine wheel. The universe is the medicine wheel. When we partake in life, we are part of the medicine wheel. Um, the medicine wheel, as I see it, as I come to understand it, um, from my culture and from the American cultures and the Native American, North American cultures, is that the medicine wheel is um, that they are part of the spoke of the wheel. That every every person, all my relations, that everybody is valid. The table, the chairs that we sit on, everything is part of that wheel. We are all the spoke. When one spoke is weakened, it weakens the wheel. So what I'm learning as a Native American of the South and North now is that the medicine wheel of the Nemenha is broken down in different ways. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. Um, a lot of Native North American Native indigenous tribes and bands and uh, different groups uh, have different colors that represent their wheel. And so as part of my religion, as part of how I see things, it's going to be kind of a biased uh, interpretation of how I see things. So anyone who's listening tonight will probably have a whole different aspect, a whole different group, a whole different arrangement of their wheel is set up. Um, some colors are black, some are red. In our particular wheel, what we'll do is we're going to start through the north of the medicine wheel. Um, Basically, the north of the medicine wheel on the Nimenha band, our wheel, as you can see in my picture, if you look on my profile, what you'll see is uh, the drum. I've created a drum. I've painted on that drum the different colors that represent what we believe in. Now, every color and every person who is, part, who is Nimenha has their, is their own medicine, their bundle. These colors just represent the Nemenha. So my colors can be completely different. They represent my culture, my medicine, the type of work I do, the interactions I have with people. Now, the medicine wheel, we go with the white. We'll start with the white. Okay, and then we'll work ourselves inwards instead of working ourselves outwards so we understand. The hoop itself, just the whole circle, if you look at it, the hoop represents all my relations. It's part of the nervous system of the body, or the earth, as you look at it, the dirt that you see. That is what we are looking at. The white, the north, is the Sikh spirit council, the respiratory system. Here, the animal that sits here in this door is called the wolf, the white. And part of our doors, when we do sweat lodges, is um, the north door. We're seeking spirit. Then we travel east. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we travel east, 
and we represent the yellow. If you see the yellow there in the picture. The yellow uh, in our belief system, and our core belief system, is the digestive system. It's the seas far people, the eagle, the birds prey, the birds that, um, that soar. We see beyond ourselves. So these different points represent yellow, the eagle, the digestive system, and the seas far. So all these have different meanings. Right now we're only going to be covering about seven different topics on it. But the wheel is actually bigger than this. It, 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 you can expand on it. Then we travel to the south door, the earth, um, on the earth of the wheel, the mother. Here we go. And it's the mouse, the green, the south point. It's the skin, the bones, the muscle that looks within. So we're like the mouse. We have to get down on the ground and we have to look and actually see, see ourselves. Then we travel to the west door, at least the Sikh's council door, the buffalo. Here we'll, on the menace wheel, the Nemanha, what we do is with the liver, the kidneys, the gallbladder, all these different aspects. Our wheel represents our body. So the blue is just the color. All the colors are representations for us. If you were to draw the body on the wheel itself, you could see these different aspects. Now we travel to the center. The center of the wheel <coughs> is usually called the red. And is the red road and the one good day that creation has prepared for us. It's symbolic. It's the core motivation. It drives us to do what we do and say the things we say. And therefore, when we're on our bondo altar, the center is the important. So we place the red stone in the center of, the, of this point. And that is ourselves. We are the center. Not that everything revolves around us, but it's just that it's a beginning point. Because when we create, everything grows around us. We're like a little rock thrown into the water. It ripples out. And then we have the sky father point. It's the center point represents the part of creation that has to do with protection and defense. The father is the protector, the defender of the family. That is not to say that there are only ones who perform this, but you know, holistically speaking, the father generally is the most, the more masculine, which I don't always agree with that, but for this particular topic, this is what we're going to, how we're going to present the sky father point. The sky father point also is the immune system point on our body. And then I didn't say on the self-center, it was actually the circulatory system, so I missed that part. Then we go to the Earth Mother. It's the center point that represents the part of creation that has to do with nurturing. The mother is you know, the nurturer and the caregiver in the family. Again, that is not going to suggest that others don't do that. But for this representation on our wheel, that's what we're going to do. The point is associated with the endocrine system. As a nurturer of the body, it creates up the earth mother in a physical body and provides uh, you know, maintenance of the body. So the endocrine system is the creation with us. So now that you understand where our medicine wheel and how everything works together, uh, it's just a, just a brief overview of uh, our medicine wheel and how we approach it. The medicine wheel it has also it has many purposes. We also use the medicine wheel in uh, different ceremonies. We use it in our bundle ceremonies as Nemenha. And from the, within our bundles is our medicine that we carry. The things that we do to help, to work, to uh, engage. So when we present our bundles, we actually have a place where um, there is actually a, med a little mini medicine wheel inside. Uh, understand the medicine wheels, like I said in the beginning of the show, is, is enormous. It, the earth is a medicine wheel. Uh, the universe is a medicine wheel. Uh, stones uh, made into formation, round formation, is a medicine wheel. So as long as we understand that the medicine wheel doesn't belong to any particular person or any particular spirituality because, I mean, uh, Druids, uh, Wiccans, um, different cultures use the medicine wheel. Uh, in Peru, we use medicine wheels. The Mayans use medicine wheels. And it's a misconception that Native Americans are the only ones that have the medicine wheel. I know I might be kind of reaching out there, but um, I've run into people. You know, it's not their fault. They just don't know that the medicine wheel is, uh, was always Native American. That's not true. That's not correct. Medicine wheel came and developed 
as their cultures progressed and grew as well. Uh, the Mayan calendar is a very good example, very, very good example of, of a metis wheel that now we have a lot of people talking about um, at the end of the world, 2012, I believe December, um, I'm not sure of the exact date, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how that progresses. But um, what I'm looking at, though, is to understand our concept of the medicine and how it affects our body. As Nemenha, we are taught, and we, we look at different points, like I was saying earlier, represent the different you know, parts and functionalities, the body, the liver, the kidneys, the bones, everything. Everything is all my relations. Everything. Even to the computer, on the headset I'm wearing, all related. Now you're probably looking at my picture, and I probably look like a little a white man. You know, that's my European side, of course, and I, my Latin American side is in there as well. Pictures to justice, but a lot of the reasons that I went back to rediscover my culture, you know, why I uh, embraced this um, the Nemeha so well, so much, and my, all my art is um, there's a prophecy, it's a 500 year prophecy called the Inca prophecy, where um, the eagle of the north and the condor of the south fly together. And they said the earth will awaken. The eagles in the north cannot be free without the condors of the south, or vice versa, I would assume. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is now, it's now happening. Now the time. A lot of people say it's the Aquarian age. It's an era of light. An age of awakening, an age of returning to natural ways. You know, our generation is just starting to trying to understand that. Different schools of understanding, different thoughts, heart, intuition, nature. Native I don't even know if native because native is is pretty vague. I think we're more indigenous to our regions for where we're from. Native actually means nature. So we are part of nature. And nature is part of mother. She's inside of us and we're all inside of her. We depend totally on the earth. You know, without the earth, we can't survive. And she's the biggest medicine wheel there is in the world. The sun is a medicine wheel. Water is part of the medicine wheel. It is a medicine wheel. So we belong to the evolution of nature and our physical bodies, and how spiritual bodies come and from the sun, and not from the sun, from the two eyes. And you understand the medicine wheel is inside of us. So that's the prophecy of the, the Inca prophecy, and how the two the eagles from the north and the condors from the south will come together. Now, I totally understand that um, this is new for a lot of people, what the medicine wheel does, but a lot of, uh, there's a lot of love and there's a lot of caring behind the medicine wheel. Uh, we see the medicine wheel in uh, dream catchers. We see the medicine wheel, different aspects of medicine wheels in our currency. Um, to understand why are our coins uh, triangled or square, why are they round? Because the circle is infinite, never ending, always going round and round. It's a symbol of the universe. Everything's in it. So the stones that we pick and everything that we put into our bundles to make our medicine, it's all relevant. It's all part of us. There are no accidents. The energies that we create when we create a medicine wheel is phenomenal. Sometimes we create medicine wheels we don't even realize it. And as a stone carrier from you know the lodge that I belong to, Journey's Way Lodge, I am the tippy leader of my lodge. And what I do, I am uh, basically a sweat lodge leader. I conduct the sweats for uh, our band here in Ohio. And uh, we talk about the medicine wheel. We explain why it's so important. And we give thanks to Wai Aiken. Wai Aiken is, in other words, for God. The wisdom of the four directions. We teach all of this. It, it gets very, um, very deep because we're all related. No West from is just one of our uh, representation of us. Now, as as we create our medicine wheels and our bundles, um, everybody has their own medicine. In my particular bundle, I will have things that uh, represent who I am as. Uh, Christian man, because I am Christian, and I have no embarrassing, and I am not going to say that I know I'm not going to play behind 
screens and smokes and mirrors, but that's what I am. I believe in Christ, and I have things in my bundle that represent that. Has that always been that way? No. And everybody's bundle is different, and that's what we have to respect. Every cultures, all indigenous people, that uh, our bundles are how we heal, help heal ourselves, not others, because it's a misconception that we heal other people. The thing is that we're healing ourselves to understand that. Not to get away from the medicine wheel a little bit, but um, the medicine wheel has many, many significance. I mean, the round of the wheel is just amazing. You know, if you look at your car, uh, you ride on four medicine wheels a day. It's ironic that it would be four directions, but uh, you have four wheels on your car. And do we ever give thanks to the four wheels that move us from point A to point B? Probably not, because it's just we just assume that that's just how it's supposed to be. But look around you sometimes. When you're in your home or you're down the street, just take a look and just, you know, see how many medicine wheels you actually see. The medicine wheel has a lot of implications and it does a lot of things for us. I mean, I'm very, as as a medicine man, I'm very, you know, I like to pick up on things that are very subtle that somebody else may not even think about. Uh, for example, uh, you move your drink cup. The top of it's round and the lid closes round. Uh, most people wouldn't give any thought of that. But that's, in a sense, it's all my relations. It's part of a medicine. It's part of us. You know, I mean, our pupils are round. The whole in our ears to listen is round. So it's, it's a divine creation that has made us. So now we're coming to the point where we're trying to understand who we are and what we do and why the medicine wheel is important to implement our, our life. Number one, it's an easy way to understand and an easy way to grasp the concepts. Um, not everybody wants to be uh, Indian or indigenous or, you know, uh, aborigine, but um, you don't have to be. You don't have to be. The only thing you have to understand is that everything is part of your relation. That everything in life you have influence with. So when we look at the medicine wheel and we wonder why it's round, because in the universe is round. It's huge. It's big. The earth is big. And um, understanding that makes it a lot, a lot clearer. And then you have the three center points in the middle, and there's three. So it's almost like a trinity of sorts. You have yourself, the Earth Mother, and the Sky Father point. And the three of you work in harmony. And we need each, every part of this spoke is very important in order for us to live and to understand. Now, if you need to know more about the medicine wheel and how the Nemanha used the medicine wheel, we have a new website now, and it's, uh, it's the nemenha.org. Um, you can actually go to my website, edgarcia.com, and you can actually pick it up there, uh, a link to it, and go to it and check it out. It's really beautiful. They've really updated things. They've worked on it. Um, a lot of, um, well, for those of you, make sure it's spelled nemenha. It's spelled N E M E N. H A H. <clears throat> so, I mean, if there's any questions or anybody has anything they would like to call in or ask me about the medicine wheel that maybe I've missed, it's, um, just feel free or you can actually drop me a chat while we're talking. I know we have a few callers listening on the, on the line right now. So um, just feel free. Feel free to call in or any questions you have. But um, I just wanted to get back to the prophecies of the Incas and how um, the North and the South come together. Um, I believe that um, you know the Incas have been portrayed as people who were conquered very quickly. Um, I don't believe that's true. I believe that what happened was that they had a lot of trust. Uh, even though they were conquering people themselves, they would take people over. Uh, by 50,000, we control over 100,000 people. But um, 
I believe that sometimes we, well, we don't understand things or we don't recognize things. We tend to have put a little more faith into things and try to understand them. And that's kind of what happened to the Incas, how they were manipulated, taken over, controlled. I mean, the story is universal. We've heard it from different cultures to cultures. So the, what I believe is that the Incas um, are part Nimitha. I really believe that. I truly believe that just because of the different things, the different artifacts, the different writings, and the different things that uh, they have and they've created. The Nazca Lions, a lot of people say that uh, the Nazca Lions are a mystery. Why does it have to be a mystery? Is it possible that people in a different era, a different time, maybe did things that we just don't conceive that can be done? I believe that's what happened. I think it believe that the Incas were actually a lot of people, there's a lot of proof now that we just glide off the mountains down to the to the land, to the flat plain. And that's how we uh, traveled quicker. Who's to say, you know, that's not true. Uh, different gliders and stuff have been found and we have different medicine wheels that are all throughout that whole region. The Nazca Lions is is big, big medicine wheels. Huge, huge, huge medicine wheels carved into the ground. So like I say, I'm a condor, and I'm reuniting with eagle. So we're all the same. At one point, we all were together. For some reason, we've been separated, and a lot of people just don't quite understand that. Understand that you know, we seem, we all seem to be factions. That we belong to this group, or I belong to that group, or and that's what happens. We we get pinned against each other. When we start to understand that we are who we are, and what is it is you know, our life will be a lot better. And that's how we have to approach the medicine wheel. It's all my relations, the hoop. The hoop is the nervous system. The earth is the dirt, the top layer. We have to take care of her. When we travel north and we don't take care of the air in the north and the ice glaciers are melting, then we cannot breathe. The respiratory system starts to be compromised. We get too hot or too extremely cold, but we can't bear. When we travel east to the digestive system, excuse the digestive system, when we destroy Mother Earth, her digestive system, when we destroy the land, and then the Earth can't break things down or has trouble assimilating things, plastics per se, or different types of chemicals that we create, it only hurts the Earth, it hurts us. And the Earth will find a way to incorporate it to her system, as we do in our bodies. So when you look at your body, and you're wondering why you're ill, and why you're sick, and when you look at the earth, all the things that we do to her, and how we poison her, and how she suffers, but when she suffers, we suffer. When we make things that can't be broken down or biodegradable, because it costs too much, at least that's what they say then what are we doing to our bodies? What are we saying to ourselves? You know, we take in chemicals. When we take in different things in our system, it hurt us. So we have to look at the Earth, yeah, us as a comparison, because we're connected to her. And then when we look to the south, to the endocrine system, the nurturing part for Mother Earth, you know, the skin, the bones, the muscles, when we tear her apart, when we rip her coal from the ground, and we would take the oil from her and we'd be sucker dry. Are we really not sucking ourselves dry? What happens with all this byproduct? Where does it go? Well, it goes back into the food system. It goes back into the food chain. It gets processed back in. With all those names and all those different things that you can't pronounce on labels of, of, on your food that you eat, all petroleum. Because that's the way the governments have figured out a way to price the process. And the best processing plant in the world is you. They use you to process and to change. So when we look within, we have to look in the earth. She's just our mirror. Well, if if there's a problem and you're there, then you're part of the problem. And you got to figure out how I need to dissolve this. How am I need to clear and clean this? We travel west, and then we're here in the buffalo stand. And we seek counsel here. When we compromise our liver and our kidneys and our gallbladders, just like the earth, 
when she's compromised, then she can no longer cleanse, or she can no longer regenerate, or push out and clean. There's a problem, very, very, very big problem. The blue, the water. Um, it comes to the point where we're going to contaminate, where we have already had contaminated the earth. And everything we do to the earth, we do to ourselves. Everything. Um, I believe that with all my heart. I see that with all my heart and with my eyes. When I close my eyes, my ears still open and she still cries. So and then we sit in the hoop. We sit on the earth. And we sit in the center point. And here we are in the circulatory system. Our blood flowing through our body. Our lymphatic system. When we compromise that, she gets compromised. Because what we do to her, we do to ourselves. And also then we have sky father, the immune system. When the earth can't take care of herself, when the skies are polluted, we can't clean, can't take care of us, we're going to run into problems. And the earth mother, such a beautiful, nurturing thing, and to treat it with such disgrace, with such, I don't know, I don't even have words for it. It really makes me sad. For the future of our children, what will happen to them? How will they live? How will they come to understand what we've done to her? And she's the biggest medicine of all. I know we were talking about introductions, but the introduction is we need to understand the true medicine wheel of all people, not just the one particular group or one particular uh, race or one particular belief system or spirituality. I mean, we can go into vast details about things, but we have to understand one thing. If the Earth Mother, we need to take care of her. If we don't take care of her, we will suffer. She'll, like, she'll be fine. The ones I worry about is myself, my children. But um, now that I understand that, that's my quest. That's what I'm on. That's what I'm trying to understand and trying to better in myself. How, as a participant on this earth, this big blue ball that, you know, the universe has created you know, out of nothing, out of my conscious mind that I can't even fathom, um, how am I going to live? How can I go day by day? And when I don't open my mouth and I don't speak, Will I just have a tear coming down my eye? That's not correct. That's not right. When I see someone throw a cigarette out, should I sit there and say, hey, or should I just keep my mouth shut? Well, I've started to not necessarily engage, but just kind of remind her to people. You know, I would just say, you know, there's a place for that or something. And that's what I think we need to understand. That the Earth Mother, our medicine wheel, who she is, She's Nemanha, she's Cherokee, she's Irish, she's Peruvian, she's Italian, she's all the above, all the above. So your introduction today of the Nemanha wheel is an introduction to yourself, basically. So that's what we've talked about today briefly, about the Nemanha and our medicine wheel and how it corresponds to different points of our body. And like I said, if you want more information about the medicine wheel and how we incorporate into our lives, into our bundle system, um, just visit nemanha.org and there will be plenty of people who can help you or you can actually contact me at igigarcia.com. But um, I've really enjoyed the time that we've had to talk about the medicine wheel. I know we uh, have other topics coming up later. We have some guest speakers who will be on live with us. And uh, the next uh, topic, I believe, is going to be uh, the animal uh, meditations and how we speak to animals through the medicine bundle. So we have a hot, whole bunch of new things coming up. We're actually going to be traveling and we're going to be going to Peru here, I think, in the summer sometime, and to visit these sites, these sacred sites that um, we hope to uh, hope to be around when our children are growing and their children. I really appreciated your time today, and I really appreciate uh, everybody who was online. And if you have any questions, you can email me or call me. Uh, 
at uh, just call me at Iggy Garcia at iggygarcia.com and with any questions that you may have. Appreciate the time, and uh, we'll see you. Uh, I think next Sunday at 6 p.m. we'll be talking about animal bundles and the animal meditations and how animals and us how we communicate with animals through our native or indigenous ways.